I'm uh, Margaret N. Windsor, and I've put up a lot on Facebook and a lot of YouTubes, and I've put out a lot more information than this. What I wanted to put up here is uh, Jody Mountbatten, who is uh, a cousin to Philip Mountbatten, who's a cousin to Elizabeth that he married. Uh, Elizabeth is illegal, and this is what I've been putting up, and a lot of other things that people want me put out of the way is what they want right at the moment, and it's pretty scary. Anyway, what I wanted to say first of all is uh, Jody, Princess Jody Mountbatten, contacted me on Facebook sometime back, probably uh, quite a few months back. And she said she friended me, or she asked for my friend, and I friended her. And she told me the minute she saw and heard about my Facebook account and YouTubes, I believe she said YouTubes also, that she knew I was telling the truth. She sent me photos of uh, the Kennedy clan who were part of my kidnapping. Joe Kennedy was ambassador. I put all this up. Uh, 36 till he kicked him out in 46. And Jeff K., Rockefellers, Rothschilds that control your bank, your media, Roosevelt. Uh, and then I found out also that uh, of late that um, Winston Churchill was in on the plot to remove my father, Edward VIII. Uh, it was character assassination. He was married to my mom, Claudia Ruth O'Keefe. I don't have her picture. Sister to artist, Georgia O'Keefe, the artist. Now, Elizabeth is illegal, and so is George, her father, the illegal six. And her brood are all illegal. They are war criminals. Uh, this is... Uh, the phony, the imposter that married Wallace Simpson. Wallace never married my father. That was a lie, an assassination plot to take him down. They assassinated his character. My dad was married to my mom in 36 or 35, and she was a school teacher, and uh, quite frankly, it was a plot, so it really didn't matter, but my grandmother, Mary, didn't like her, said she was a commoner and wasn't fit to be queen. And so the whole takedown in 37, well, here's abdication. This is my father's picture. He did abdicate. It was a forced abdication. Here's the double, among probably others, I'm sure, that married Wallace Simpson in 37. Remember, my father was already married, and he uh, it was a forced abdication. He intended to take it back. There's so many that wanted him gone because he was honest, and that's exactly what they made him look like he wasn't. In 1939, the year I was born, uh, this is, um, I don't know if you can see that's 1939, but it is. Um, this is George VI, my uncle. That's the year I was born. He's meeting with Roosevelt. He'd come in from Canada. And uh, they're plotting my kidnapping. Uh, Roosevelt appointed Jeff K.'s father, Joe, ambassador, 36 till he kicked him out in 46. So uh, they got all got in on my kidnapping. And then I find out um, Churchill, uh, he burned files, and he was in on the plot to take them down in my kidnapping. So what I want to show here, I've told you this because the British have told me. They've been there, I, I first learned in 83, and then I could remember some. I was out at Larry Flint's because I'd written a book, a uh, medical malpractice book about mind control murders and programming and done in patterns. These murders were done in patterns because mind control is invisible. So these were deliberately done in patterns. By the way, I had a letter from the U.S. Attorney's Office, William Harper, June the 23rd of 79, ongoing investigation, national security involved. So uh, that in I was flown out to Flint's. He was shot 
March the 6th of 78, while I was doing the book in Marietta, I was living at Moonraker, and he was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia. I was living in Marietta, Georgia. He says here, this is an endorsement, though I didn't win that campaign. I was flown out there. I had never met him. I knew the minute I heard of his shooting, it was a mind control and done in patterns. Uh, one of the doctor congressmen I'd written about in the medical malpractice, um, uh, uh, Larry uh, McDonnell, Piedmont Hospital, uh, he went down in a plane August 31st of 83, and I was flown out to Mr. Flint's. He helped me in that campaign, and I really haven't seen him since. I stayed at his home twice in October. He says here, though, that I know who was responsible for his shooting. I don't know if you can see this, if the light's good enough. And he mentions Murphy. Um... Uh, I want to say this by way of one of them that was a mind control victim, and he was put to death, Timothy McVeigh. He says here that they knew who was responsible for his shooting. U.S. military. This was a book done by it's implantable biochips. They're talking about chips they put in you, root canals, anywhere in your body. Uh, and this is why people don't want it told. The New World Order people are in. The Rockefellers control your press. And I don't know how long I'll stay alive. It's called Project Lucid, but it um, tells a, a little bit of what I was telling. And a church, by the way, Martha, and give it, gave it to me and said, uh, this is some of a few things connected to what you were telling. Now I wanted to put this up because this is where they brought me in forty one and gave me the name of uh, a twin, Peggy Dempsey and Mary Childers. Lina Dempsey, this is a gussied up, I call it, photo, because they look nothing like this. This was a hellhole of pigsty. This is me in, I guess, about 1943. They brought me over at age two at 41. Her twins were born out of wedlock, Peggy and Carl, and she killed them, and the family covered it up. And I, uh, the grandmother swore them, and this one told me right here, the woman right here in the center, back when I had a letter from, uh, well, this from, I was driving a Hustler car. It was furnished to me by Hustler and Mr. Flint. And um, I guess she thought, and the sheriff there happened to be honest, in Lexington, Kentucky, Carlisle, and she admitted then with all this on me, uh, she admitted that her mother had sworn the family to secret about the line of killing the twins. So I was put there. Cortland Air Base was there in 41 when they kidnapped me and brought me there. So I assumed they flew me in there. They had to go out and get a photographer and let me clue you. The house is back here. It doesn't show it. It was horrible growing up. I mean, sick. Uh, but I'm going to show you Carl because the state of Alabama deliberately, I mean, it's like giving me all this information and letting me tell it, and the law doesn't work for me. It's horrible, and people threaten you, and I'm threatened to be locked up. Um, and right now I'm afraid because some things are going on here. I think probably some of it is because of the murders involving mind control, the Virginia Tech and uh, some of the others that have gone down, and not just Larry Flint's, but um, a, a lot of others. I want to show this, though, because it's Carl. They were Carl, Preston Dempsey, and Peggy Ann Dempsey, and I still have to use her name. I married a Childers. I use Peggy Ann Childers, Facebook and YouTube. And by the way, they... Uh, this is true. This woman lives on Mountain Pass Road, and her name is Queen, and I know what she got out of this whole thing, a house that you should see, and her husband got a job. Here's her kids. It shocked me. She lived across from the on Mountain Pass in Troutville, where I used to have to crawl up the side of the mountain in the freezing snow, because I got shut down, period. I lived on the Appalachian Trail and froze and starved, and everybody knew about it. They were told not to help me, and they didn't. 
But anyway, her kids' names, and this gets involved with um, some of the, the mind control murders and patterns. Uh, her name is Angela Queen, and she's the one who tried to take down my phone the day before Easter this year, and she did a pretty good job of it. I just got a phone back, but my uh, some of my YouTube is messed up, and the other was hard to get back, Twitter, etc. Anyway, uh, her adopted daughters, I'm going to go ahead and put this up because it happened. Everything I've told is true. Her adopted daughters were, uh, they're biological, and their, um, m their name before they were adopted by her was Castle Queen. Well, Castle and then adopted by the Queens. So it gets into that type of thing, and I'm not going to go and try to explain all that. But um, I guess that's all I was going to put up here because it's gotten pretty rough for me. I mean, it's always been rough. But I wanted to put up about... Uh, uh, Mount Bat and Jody did put that up um, on Facebook, and quite frankly, I I think I may have sent it to a co the press isn't going to cover this. The Rockefellers control the press. You better believe that uh, Trump that's coming in. I hope and pray he gets in and safe and everything. He's told you the press is corrupt. They're controlled by the very people that kidnapped me, the New World Order, your global Illuminati, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Kennedys, etc. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to put up here, but the I don't think Jody will mind me putting this up. She sent it to me. She sent the pictures that I'm not putting up. Uh of the family years ago, the Kennedy, Joe Kennedy, etc., visiting her and her father. And I don't know her father's name. I know that uh, the Mountbatten's are cousins, uh, and it would be the mother that is kin to the Windsors. So you got Philip Mountbatten marrying Elizabeth, and they're illegal, and they know it. The whole lineage is they kidnapped me, to, they're war criminals. And uh, anyway, there was one of the Mountbatten's that was really, I, I'm sorry, Jody, if you see this, but she can't help it. But he was really mean. He was Philip's father, I believe. And he became uh, friends with the presidents, and he was very high up in the British Army. And if you notice anything, Great Britain was invaded with illegal treaties when they kidnapped me and did what they did to my father because he didn't go along with any of it. The United States invaded pretending they were uh, friends and took down, well, they have literally destroyed Great Britain. It wasn't enough that you stole it from us way back then. Your revolution, you had to go and take my father out you with nothing but lies. I have experienced nothing but torture. You took it from me, and now then, um, you know, I'm under threat every minute. I really am. And I don't know where my children are, Mark and Scott, who are heirs after me. So I'm going to quit with this. I've showed you the, I think I did, the uh, Carl's. Uh, I could show you the other, but I, I won't do that, not on here. It's a birth certificate. I still have to use it, but the state of Alabama, it's like saying here, what are you going to do about it, people? Uh, this is illegal. When I ask to get them, because I have to use that birth certificate of Peggy for my name and for purposes, uh, so I got it from the state of Alabama, and it says right on it, it's illegal to change or mark through in any way, yet they've marked through on Carl's birth and the birth certificate of Peggy that I have to use. They've marked through the date that was put on there, and they've still left the eight on it, and inserted over the top January of 1939. And it's my understanding from a member of the family down there that I still talk to that family. Uh, they all knew this and hid it. And man, people want you dead. They go to church every Sunday, and then when they find out that I found out about my kidnapping and was going up on Facebook, it really hit them. Uh, and they just want 
it's odd. People will commit crimes against you, and then they want you dead. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I thank Jody for sending me the information, and I hope she doesn't mind me using it. I didn't put anything up other than her name. And um, I'll leave you. I do want to say this before I go. There's a woman on here, and she's treated different than me. And she even uses the Windsor name, and she's not a Windsor. Her name is Emily Elizabeth Windsor. She uses it, Craig. Uh, someone told me on Facebook, uh, oh, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, that there was a person on there claiming to be the daughter of Edward VIII. Well, it was her. She has no right to use the Windsor. I can't even use it, and I am the legal heir. And believe me, my father has been lied about. Here's the deal with her, though. I, I mean, to hear the news tell it, if they tell it, this is history, why my dad, he was a beautiful man. It was a plot to take him down, and they did. Look what they've done to me, my mom. But... um She's not. She said she was his daughter, and then when I started going through her uh, YouTube's and all that, I knew she wasn't because evidently she didn't know about my dad marrying my mom, Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, and then the uh, abdication, and then the uh, in '37 the double, the lookalike imposter married Wallace Simpson. Now in her telling all this and biographies and YouTube's and all that. She clearly states that uh, her father had to have been, well, she said that he became the Duke of Windsor. Well, that's the imposter in the date she gave that her mother was impregnated and supposed to, well, did meet with the person saying he's the Duke of Windsor, which is not my dad. Uh, that that's when she was conceived in about 1944. Anyway, if anybody cares, they can go back and look. But it's kind of strange. I've lived a hell of a life, and she's able to sit with uh, earphones. She finished college at George uh, Mason, and she had her degree in um, group communication, I believe. So I have had to do mine from scratch and lucky that I haven't been killed yet. And I want to say this one more thing, too, before I have to put this away. Uh, how I ended up here is another point of interest. I came, uh, I didn't have the car then, but when I drove through May the 4th, it was on a Sunday, I believe, at about 9 o'clock, I had the radio on. It, uh, Larry Flint furnished me a car for a year, leased it, and I never talked to him again uh, anyway, and I turned the car back in when the year was up. But I was driving through then, Charlottesville, and here I am in Roanoke here, climbing the mountain, freezing, starved, have run from hell and back, trying to get away from people who want me dead. Um, they don't want the truth in this whole mess told. But anyway... I heard that uh, Zara Nicholas's daughter, Anastasia, was in Charlottesville and that she was locked in a mental hospital. And, uh, hey, this is a way to bypass uh, your court system and everything. And uh, that's what they're using on the mind control victims like this young man here, James Holmes. They're treating him for mental illness for the Grand Theater shootings in Aurora, Colorado, and um, you talk about medical malpractice, and he's not, mental illness has nothing to do with mind control. It's a scapegoat that they're using uh, on mind control victims. Now, if I can get back to Anastasia's, or Nicholas's daughter, I wish I could have met her. I did meet the young man. He found me and gave me copies that I'm going to run out 